Cheers, Chris. So, I'm afraid it might not be quite as exciting as uh, what Adam presented with all the exciting things going to PHP 5.4, but um, it's quite an important topic. So, Interfero is a source code and project management application. Now, that's not particularly useful bit of information. Uh, when I say project management, it's more from a point of view of being able to track things like issues, uh, documentation, and other bits and pieces relating to a source code, to a development project, rather than the whole commercial point of view of project management, which is draw to schedules and lay out the issues and track them all and that sort of stuff. Um, it combines the functionality of a typical SCM viewer, so things like, for example, uh, ViewVC, <laughs> along with other tools like a basic wiki, issue tracker, into a single application, which makes it really easy for small and medium-sized projects, in particular open source projects, to use. And it's fully open source under the GPL license, which is why I'm here going to talk about it. So, why am I here going to talk about Interfero to begin with? Well, I'm not actually a developer of a project. Uh, Amademus uses Interfero uh, for all of our internal project tracking as well as our public tracking. And that really started the process about a year ago. We were originally started as a single person company myself, uh, looking, well, using a CVS uh, machine in a back dark room, which we never spoke about. And we needed something a little bit more flexible for multiple uh, contributors to use, different staff, and so forth. So we came out with a few different requirements. And what we realized is we needed something that provided the ability to view the source code via the web-based interface. I mean, not, you don't always want to download the entire repository to go and find one particular file that you're interested in. Um, issue tracking was a major one. If you ever tried using a mailing list for all your bug reports and feature requests, things tend to get dropped and forgotten by your developers pretty quickly. So that was, those are two main points for us. The other ones is we needed the ability of public and private projects. Being open source focused, I'm sure many of you guys have released most of your code openly and publicly, but now and then there's something that's either too embarrassing to release publicly or you have a specific customer fork which has to be kept internal and hidden. We also wanted different access levels. Now, we were operating on a model where we had three developers working full time, various open source contributors wanting to jump in and look at things, um, and also some customers for particular projects wanting to be able to log on and maybe check some source out which I didn't necessarily want public. So we needed a system that was very flexible without being for traditional uh, one box for internal, one box for customers type of model. We also wanted support for multiple versioning systems. Now, as I mentioned before, and please never repeat this outside this room, we use CVS. Um, we later upgraded to SV. Oh dear, been recorded apparently. Um, we later upgraded to SVN, obvious migration step, and we're looking in the future and using things like Git. Um, and we also needed a low barrier of entry for users. Now, our staff ranged from relatively skilled um, gurus down to UI developers, graphics people, um, and contractors just coming in to do a little bit of work. So we needed the ability to scale for all skill levels and find a system that worked in between. So what am I talking about Interfero again? I think it's a fantastic application. And this comes from a user point of view. I've committed a couple patches to it, but the majority of it's written by some other people altogether. I'm talking about it because I think it's a really, really good tool. I also think that everyone in this room should be using something like Interfero. I imagine a lot of you are, and I'll cover some of the other options um, shortly. But if you're not, please pay attention because this will make people's lives so much easier. It's open source, always want to promote an open source project, and it's written in PHP, which everyone here would know is the greatest language ever written. Even I would say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I guess the next question is, why not one of the million different options? Well, from my research and experience, it came down to two different categories of alternative options. Uh, you had a traditional Unix-style approach of choosing one tool for one task. Uh, so you could choose, say, a Bugzilla, um, Bug Tracker. You could choose something like a Bentum, which is done by MySQL, slash Sun, slash Oracle, slash whatever they are now. Um, Media Wiki for your Wiki information, and so forth. Now, that's quite a good model if you're working on a large project. Say you've got a source base the size of I don't know, Mozilla or the Red Hat bug tracker, things like that. Things that are really, really large, having separate tools does make a lot of sense because you get more control, more functionality and so forth. <coughs> However, in our case, our projects ranged from our largest, which was our budding system, and we're only talking maybe 30,000 lines, um, down to five line script files for a nudge that they wanted to keep track of. So that wasn't really a suitable option. We don't want to spawn up another copy of the applications every single time we needed to do a project. So we looked at some of the other ones around. Um, a lot of you are probably familiar with GitHub or Gatorius. Um, GitHub being a proprietary network, I believe, and Gatorius is based on an open source uh, code base. 
There's also Google Code, which seems to be increasingly popular lately. Um, as a side note, Interfero was originally developed as an alternative to Google Code, mainly because the main developer was trying to export his project one day and found he couldn't do so very easily. And you'll notice that in the screenshots I'll show you, it's quite similar in terms of layout and functionality. Um, the cool thing is, it's going a lot further than Google Code has, and you can change it yourself and so forth. And there's also Launchpad and many, many others, SourceForge and so forth. Um, I think Interfero fits in quite nicely uh, in this ecosystem, it sort of fills a niche that a lot of us don't really do. They tend to focus on mainly the large scale deployments or hosted deployments. Um, but I mean, have a play around, see what on suits you guys best. The one main reason we looked into Ferro over the Git options, like a tourist and GitHub, was support for multiple SEMs. Now, um, from the base features of Interferro, you actually have support for not only SVN, but Git, Mercurial, and of the next upcoming release, there's also support for Monotone. So, I'm not sure how clear it is to see, but um, it's a pretty straightforward interface, though. They've kind of cloned a bit of the Google Code look. Um, this screenshot there is just of the source code viewer. You can browse your projects, so forth, sports tagging, branching. One of the neat features that came with is a changelog page. You can actually just jump on there and see who's been working on projects lately and track through and see all the latest commits being made. Again, it's an SCM viewer. It's not that exciting. There's your trackers where more interesting stuff happens. Now, it looks pretty basic. You've got the ability to post issues, numbers, flag them as favorites, um, and tag them and so forth. The key thing is it's actually quite fixable. So here's an issue that we created. Now, at Amber DMS, we had the problem of we're developing a lot of web applications, and developers would go do their thing, make a bunch of database changes, and need to track them. So we were using Deferro to collect all the SQL changes that were being made, and before issues were closed, we'd grab them, stick them in a file, and commit into SVN. But we also found out a fantastic way for actually developing uh, without necessarily being in the same location. We could set up uh, and, or design the user interface of the application. Maybe it's even just me drawing it on a bit of paper over my lunch break, chucking in the scanner, and uploading it straight into Deferro. Now, even though we're in the same office, this offered the great ability of having uh, open source contributors and developers see what else is going on and not being locked out of that whole development process, which is easy to do, especially when you can just talk to the developer sitting next to you rather than posting to the mailing list. So we tried to structure all our processes around the Interfero Tracker. The other great thing about it is the tagging is very, very flexible. Now, a lot of problems I've had in the past with some of the more enterprise-focused applications, for example, uh, Eventum developed by MySQL, is they're very good for a very rigid business process where you set up your existing tags and that's what you deal with. Within Deferro, you can go and set up your existing tags to begin with, like your, say, your version milestones, uh, your priority levels, so forth. But you can also then go and set them on the fly when you post issues. And when you work on a smaller project, that tends to happen quite a lot. Someone implements, say, a new templating engine, so you want to go and tag it. And you don't necessarily want to have to wait for the admin who's on running on a different clock cycle to go and actually add it for you. So it made it really, really easy to work on small projects um, with multiple staff. The other great thing about it is we needed a place to stick documentation publicly for our applications um, in a form that wasn't like a PDF file upload. And Interfero actually has a wiki functionality built into it. I will admit up front, it's not the greatest wiki. I mean, something like MediaWiki or FossWiki will completely fresh it in terms of features. But it does a job. It allows you to post um, documentation. We use it mostly for installation guides and so forth. And it does a trick. It's, it's pretty nifty. And there is a fair bit of work, I believe, going on in that space. Interfero also has some very nifty features. Now, one of the ones we loved is password and key synchronization. Typical problem I've had in the past with um, some of the projects I've worked on is your environment might be a SVN or CVS box and no one has access to terms of the machine so you have to talk to the admin to get yourself a password created before you can commit to the project and then someone changes your password somewhere else but doesn't change on that machine, so on and so forth. And the made it really easy. Basically, once you set up the user, it will write your user's password or your SSH key into the files of the machine. So HT access or the Git uh, or the uh, SSH authorized keys. Basically, it means as soon as you add a user and permit them access to a project, Interfero will grant them access on the back end um, SCM as well. Very, very, very handy. Of course, we should all be using centralized authentication, but that's uh, easier said than done sometimes. And this all brings me on to the security considerations point of view in relation, relation to Interfero. Um, as I mentioned before, obviously, it's got public private projects. Um, and you can delegate access between those in different levels. And I'll just show you a little example. 
That's basically the flow of moving someone from being a purely public user all the way through to being a developer. Essentially, they can create a user account, they get read-only access to your repo, which is public, and you can get them to commit. You can say they can read and write this project, but not another one. Um, it's all very, very integrated, rather than doing the approach of having users per project or users per instance. Um, made it very easy to revoke user access, as we shown before the past with key features. A user leaves a project, or you have to get rid of a staff member or something like that, revoke their access, pulls them out of the SCM as well, done. Simple. The other great thing about Interfero is the ability to limit access to particular functions on the application. Um, sorry, wrong slide. No one there. Often you don't need all the different bits and pieces. For example, we very rarely use the download function where you can upload files for later download because we have repository servers set up for that. So you can just turn the feature off. Or you can decide that, okay, we want the user community to be able to contribute to the wiki. Sweet as, allow them to do so. Or it could be that, okay, we've had people trying to abuse this and put in malicious instructions into the wiki, maybe we should lock it down to project members only. You've got a lot of control over what level of access uh, and write abilities you want to grant to the users. I'm just going to mention as well, is you can go from a private project to a public project easy enough. So if you're still working on something and you're too embarrassed to reveal it straight away, you can simply do it private and then release it later on. Next thing I want to talk about is project planning with Interfero. Now, that um, picture up there is basically how we did project planning with Interfero, using a Marisi, traditionally printed off materials and circled with pen and labelled from there. I will admit that the project planning with Interfero is a little limited. Um, at the moment, its capabilities is pretty much limited to displaying completion levels for up to the target. Um, one of the good things that you can do is you can select a particular tag, and for that one tag, it will show only relevant um, issues and the completion level that you've done on that. But it is pretty rudimentary. Um, something like, um, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Atlas and um, Jara will completely fresh this in terms of um, functionality. Um, far, far more advanced. On the other hand, this is a relatively young project, and commits are always welcome. And for us, it does the trick. Uh, we usually track our project um, process via different means. What about centralized authentication? As I said before, it does do the whole key and password to a file feature. Um, as of a recent version, as in trunk, not yet in a stable release, it does now support LDAP um, frame for backend authentication, and you can also plug in your own authentication modules in as well, uh, just for those of you trying to fit it into a bit more of a structured environment. Um, the question was, has anyone done open ID? I don't know the answer to that one. I suspect not because this feature is quite new. Uh, but you can certainly write one because it does support different backends now. Underneath, uh, we're using a, using a framework called Pluff, which is developed by the same developers as Interfero. As you know, whenever you develop a PHP application, the first thing you should do is invent your own framework. Um, <laughs> it's actually not too bad. It's a reasonably structured um, MVC-style um, application framework. Does all authentication, templating, data structures in the background. Um, and there's a homepage up there as well if you, for whatever reason, want to take a look at it. And they are in the process of doing a whole bunch of rework with that framework. There's talk it might get thrown out and replaced with something else, uh, or get merged into a bigger framework that they're currently building. But I'm actually reasonably happy with the framework. I can't really complain too much. And it's pretty lightweight, which is also really good. Um, this whole application is really, really light and easy to run. Um, I will admit, if you're downloading and checking it out right now, I'm really sorry, the installation is a little bit tricky. Um, essentially, it's been written by developers for developers, and that tends to mean installation guides and manuals and easy um, one, two, three methods tend to come last. Essentially, you have to install the framework as a separate package and then install the application and do a bit of configuration between them. It's not too hard, but it's a little bit more than most people would like, and I'm hoping to make some time to actually sit down and make a nice, easy installer for that. Apart from that, it's pretty easy to install basic requirements, and no matter what sort of Dart-based fanboy you might be, you should hopefully find an option which isn't uh, too terrible for you. And that's slide slightly incorrect. We now support Git, Mercurial, Subversion, or Monotone. So what's the status of a project? It's under active development. Um, first started in 2008. We started using it at AMDMS in early 2010. Uh, stable as of release 1.0. In fact, we're still using release 1.0 and we've had almost no bugs. Uh, we're pretty happy with it. As I mentioned, Monotone SCM is coming in the 1.1 release. And there's a whole bunch of talk going on about the 2.0 release at the moment on the mailing list. Um, we're looking at moving to MongoDB. 
and there's a few bits of talk about what other features should be in there. But that's still quite up in the air at the moment. There's no um, particular consensus, I don't believe, at this stage. So that's the majority of my talk. Um, there's a few links to check out. The first one is check out their homepage. Um, Indeferro do a whole bunch of hosted versions to try and make some money from the service as well. Uh, but there's also a whole bunch of information regarding the application and links to the open source parts. If you just care about the source code, next link down. Um, there's a mailing list. The mailing list is reasonably active. There's quite a few users on there and developers tend to respond quite quickly to anything that's going on as well. Otherwise, feel free to come talk to me um, about Indeferro. Um, I didn't put it on the slide, but if you check out ambidemius.com forward slash projects, you can see how we use it at ambidemius. It's got all our open source stuff up on there. Um, otherwise, check out my website if you want to grab the links, and feel free to come talk to me. Or you can ask a question right now. Are there any questions? Okay, we'll start with you. I've actually been tweeting about this while you've been talking. Why didn't you use uh, Track? Um, I've looked at Track in the past. I just didn't like it from a usability point of view, but that was just more and more personal preference than anything else. Um, like I say, when it's an open source project, you've pretty much got another five options to anything. And we just found this one a little nicer. Anyone else? Uh, Steve, one of you. Uh, what sort of options have we got for a sort of overview? You've got 50 projects going and you're, you know, you're one of the fat controllers or something when you head boss and you want to get a dashboard sort of overview? Of um, you can view all the issues which are being assigned to yourself um, and you can view all the projects which you have access to. Um, in terms of like an like a overlord control panel, there isn't, so much, there isn't one per se. Um, it's a little limited in that respect. Any further questions? Okay, so if there are no further questions, everybody please thank Jethro for his talk. Cheers.